Okay, my name is uh, Miodra Galeksic, which is uh, quite complicated to pronounce, so this is the reason why I'm just shortly Alex. I'm uh, 53 years old and uh, originally I've been trained to be an uh, accountant, so I have a university diploma in economy from home, working in this field for uh, 20 years. Okay, and how did you get started with diving? Well, uh, just let's say by an incident in 1985, quite a long time ago, uh, my friends and I, we went for uh, just being uh, curious, looking what the guys are doing on the swimming pool. And in this time was not so popular, especially in the landlocked town. So I just went, started to learn. And from 85 until 2009, I was diving just on a holiday times like a recreational diver. Okay, and have you been trained in any targeted efforts towards coral preservation? Uh, until 2009, uh, I didn't even know too much about the corals because I've been diving mostly in the Mediterranean. Okay. Uh, see when there are not many corals like uh, in another water. So when I start to dive more often, when I start to learn to be professional diving instructor. So I slowly discovered that there are some opportunities to do something to improve the diving environment. So there have been a lot of uh, courses. On the beginning, actually 12, 13 years ago, there was nothing. So it was quite difficult to get the information, uh, but slowly I pick it up. And during the time, the courses start to show up. So I get a couple of courses from Paddy, the Association of Diving Instructors, where am I? I get the sum from the Cambridge University. There are also, in recently, in the last couple of years, they produce a couple of really nice courses online. But the most important part is I've been lucky to work in a couple of places when the serious scientists been involved in the coral restoration, plantation, or just removing. So I've been lucky to be in the support team and I've been working with them. Most of the knowledge what I have about the corals, about the uh, preserving the corals are coming from them. Okay. Have you noticed a change in the coral colonies over the years? Well, I've been uh, on Maldives in 2015-16 when the coral bleach bleaching affects mostly this water and I've been on the north part in uh, north from Malay. So I, I noticed a significant change in, uh, in uh, corals. Uh, there have been uh, huge colonies of the big table corals. The, all of them are dead now. So it started first as a bleaching and after they just completely died. So, yes. And are there frequent breaches in instructions and protocols by tourists that like really affects the coral? Well, uh, I'm, I, I will not too much agree with this one. Yes, uh, tourists are, uh, the, the biggest issue what uh, tourists are, how tourists are negatively affecting the corals are standing on the coral reef or uh, using uh, a lot of sunscreen around. And uh, uh, for a sunscreen, of course, this is a theory part what uh, probably scientists are measuring and evaluating, but I can see the damage from the tourists when they're standing on the corals. On another side, yes, it's affecting the coral reef, but this is not the, the worst part. This is not the worst part. This global warming is actually the, the worst part. This warm water, which is just a Okay. And are there any specific like pollutants that have really affected corals? Like you said, sunscreen. Like yes, yeah, sun sunscreen is a one of them, which is uh, definitely is destroying the corals. And uh, probably everything else what we drop in the water. So it's not, the, uh, it's not just the warm water, it's also pH value of the water is changing, the salinity of water is changing. All these things are affecting the uh, amount of sun, amount of energy what the corals get. So all this is affecting actually the, the life of the coral reef. Okay. And are there any efforts that uh, you feel can be made um, to help restore like 
the marine ecosystems? Well, I believe that there is a space, a lot of space to, to, to do this, but I'm not sure is there uh, are the people uh, aware of uh, things what is happening in the ocean. And yeah, I, I read a couple of articles, was a couple of documentaries about the, how things happening in Malaysia, in the Philippines, on this area when the people are depending of the sea life, when the people are depending of the fishes. So fishing there, fishing all the fishes, destroying the corals, so finally they don't even have a fishes more. Uh, we, we are doing this uh, project when we are restoring a coral reef, but you can notice that we can do just on a small scale. This is a quite time consuming, uh, it's a quite a lot of efforts and we can regrow just a small area of corals. So there, there is a lot of space. Uh, of course, science gets uh, quite uh, good uh, in, in impacts in, the, in our things, what we are doing. So they discover there's this micro uh, restoring the corals. It's a quite uh, successful way. So the story is that instead of putting a big part, they are putting a very small part, like a couple of millimeters hundreds of them and they very fast start to regrow. So this is a very good improvement, but it's a still quite a small improvement in, a, in a coral restoration program. Yes, there is a lot of space. I believe that many people can be involved in this, but well, at least stop to break them, stop to, to stand of them and stop to use extensive uh, sunscreen.